Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the Blue Whale Zipper Pouch, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Please go to the link in the description or go to your favorite search engine and simply type in Moogly Blog Blue Whale Zipper Pouch and it should pop right up. To make this pattern, I used a USL 8mm crochet hook and approximately 105 yards of Bernat blanket in the 6 super bulky weight. I used dark teal, vintage white, and gold. You'll also want some stitch markers, a pair of safety eyes, I used 24mm safety eyes, and I've also used a 9 inch white yarn zip, which I'll be showing you more of here as we go. The finished size is approximately 10 inches by 10 inches by 6 inches. Let's go ahead and get started. So the blue whale zipper pouch is made in three pieces that are then seamed together. There's this little crown on top, which is completely optional. We have the top portion of the whale, of course, in blue and the bottom in white. You can see there's our final seam right here. But part of that seam is this yarn zip zipper. This is a brand new product from Coates and Clark on Yarnspirations.com, hopefully soon in your craft stores. But this is a zipper specifically designed to sew or crochet or knit into your yarn projects. So if I turn it this way, you can see the back of those safety eyes, but you can also hopefully see just how incredibly straight my stitching is here. And I don't say that to brag, but to show off, this is the work of the yarn zip. My stitching is not normally this beautifully straight, but this yarn zip genuinely makes it so easy. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but you can see it in person. There's a channel here that runs along the length of the zipper on both sides, a little harder to see there in the white, but it is a little bit looser and you can get your hook or your yarn needle right through that so easily. And it really keeps all your stitches in a wonderful straight line and nice and even. You can see in between that channel and just using the actual stitches to help space out my stitching, this yarn uh, zipper, yarn zip, went in easier than any zipper I've ever used. I've always been hesitant to use zippers because they can be a little bit of a pain and I prefer to crochet to hand sew. But this sewed in under under five minutes and it was done. Absolutely so speedy fast. And because of those channels, I was even able to use my standard stitch markers to hold it in place. Didn't need any special tools outside of the realm of crochet at all. So thanks to this handy yarn zip, this is a fillable pouch. You can fill it up with whatever you like. School supplies, secrets. One of my favorite suggestions was going old school and putting a roll of spare toilet paper in there. And then of course you can zip it up. And this is a really beautifully durable zipper. I've only had them for a little while because they are new, but super smooth, great run, very easy to sew in. Now, both the blue top here and our white bottom are made in the round in a spiral. So we will want to make sure to have some stitch markers handy as we start our stitching. Most of the stitching is quite simple, but there are a couple of little tricks to the tail. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first part we're going to make for our blue whale is the top or the body. So we're going to take our blue color or color A, whatever color you'd like to use, and make a magic circle. I'm going to take my non-hook hand and the end of my yarn and go over my finger twice towards me, just like that. Then I'm going to use those other fingers here to sort of help secure those two ends and hold them steady. And with my hook, I will go under both of those loops, grab the loop that's furthest back, and just pull it under that edge. You can see how my other fingers are holding that loop right there. Then I can yarn over and pull that loop through. Now my magic circle is ready to be crocheted into. So what I'm going to do is chain one, there we go, and then single crochet right into the ring. When I do that, I'm putting the hook right along my finger so that it goes under that loop that goes all the way around and that hanging tail right there. We want to make sure to enclose both of those inside our stitch. So with that first single crochet made, I can take my finger out and we want to go ahead and grab one of those stitch markers and put it right in the top of the first stitch. If you don't have a stitch marker, you can use a scrap of yarn or a safety pin or even a paper clip. There we go. So now we are ready to continue stitching into our magic circle 
And after our single crochet, we'll want to add nine half double crochets into the ring. For each of those nine half double crochets though, we want to make sure to catch that tail end of our yarn because that's what gives the magic to our magic circle. After we've got our stitches in there, we can pull on that tail end and it should cinch up and close that circle nice and tight. Now, when we go to weave in that end, we'll want to make sure that we weave it in in both directions because if we only weave it in, in one direction, that circle can try and pull open again. So the key to making sure that your magic circle stays closed is just to make sure that you weave in that tail end in both directions. So I'm going to continue working my way around and we should end with a total of 10 stitches in this first round. Alrighty, so I've got one single crochet followed by nine half double crochets worked into that ring. You can see now our little tail end is just hanging out there. So now is when you want to very carefully pull on this tail end. We don't want to pull so hard that it breaks. So if you start to feel a lot of resistance, go ahead and stop. And pull a little bit at a time. You can see it's starting to close up there. And I'm just being very gently and pulling a little bit at a time. If it stops, if it comes to a point where you can't pull this closed anymore, this yarn is a little fuzzy and it's fighting you on it. So you don't wanna pull so hard that you break the yarn. Instead, what you can do when you go to weave in that end is just flip it over and weave in those ends and go ahead and pull that circle fully closed when you weave in that final end. It's better to do that with your yarn needle than break the yarn just because you've got a tiny little bit of sunlight right there. So after you've made those 10 stitches, you are finished with round one. Because we're working in a spiral, we're not going to be joining to that first stitch with a slip stitch like we often do in other projects when we work in the round. So that's why that stitch marker is so important because otherwise we could easily lose track of what round we're on as we keep working around. So after you've got your first round done, round two is simply two half double crochets in each stitch around. So we go right into that marked stitch there and put in our first stitch for our second round. And you can see there's no jog there. That's why that stitch marker is so important. We go ahead and move that up to our new first stitch of round two. And now we'll know where this round starts. So we need to put a second stitch into that same stitch. So there's our second one. And then we just continue to do that all the way around. Two half double crochets in each stitch around. So since we had 10 stitches total in round one, we'll end up with 20 stitches in round two. Alrighty, so this is what it should look like at the end of round two. We've worked two half double crochets in each stitch, and now we've come back around to that first marked stitch so we know we're at the end of the round, and we have 20 stitches. So now we're ready for round three. Rounds three, four, and five are where we get the size around, so to speak, of our blue whale. So we're going to be continuing to work in our standard flat circle rounds. So for round three, that means we begin with a half double crochet in the next stitch, which in this case is the first one. So we want to move our stitch marker right on up to our new first stitch here for round three. And we just put one stitch in that stitch and then two in the stitch after that. And that is our repeat. So now we're going to be increasing in every other stitch. So once again, that repeat is half double crochet in the next stitch, two half double crochets in the stitch after that, one and two. Then we do it again, one half double crochet in the next stitch, two half double crochets in the stitch after that. So now in this round, we're moving from 20 half double crochets in the previous round. At the end of round three, you should have a total of 30. All right, and this is what it should look like at the end of round three. To make round four, we're going to start with two half double crochets in the next stitch. So we're gonna move that stitch marker out of our way again here. So there's our first one, put our stitch marker right in the top. And then we go back into that same stitch for a second half double crochet, like so. And then we half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. So in the previous round, we had one single stitch in between our increases. Now we're going to have two stitches in between our increases. So we've increased in this first stitch by putting two stitches in the same stitch. 
So now we're going to work a single stitch, if you will, in each of the next two stitches. So two, one, one. We've done our two. Here's one in the next stitch and one in the stitch after that. And that's our repeat for this one. Two in the next stitch, one and two. And then one in each of the next two stitches, one and one. Let's do that one more time two in the next stitch, one and two, and then one, and then one. So continue on around, and at the end of round four, you should have a total of 40 stitches. And here's what it should look like at the end of round four. Round five is our last round of increases, and we're going to begin by half double crocheting in the next three stitches, and then increase in the stitch after that. So it's one, 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 two. One, 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 two. Let's do one of those together. We start in that first stitch. We wanna move that stitch marker up again. Into that first stitch. Otherwise it's so easy to lose your place. There we are. So we put a half double crochet in the first three stitches. So that's the first one. We go to the next one. Put one stitch there. In the third stitch, put one stitch there. And then two stitches in the stitch after that. And that is our repeat here. We go one, 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 two, one, 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 two, all the way around. And at the end, we'll have a total of 50 stitches. All right, so here's what it should look like at the end of round five. And at this point, we have made sort of the aroundness of our whale. So rounds six through 10 are all just worked evenly. One stitch in each stitch around to create the height. So if you'd like your whale to be taller or shorter, this is where you can add or eliminate rounds to change the height of your zipper pouch. So since it's just one half double crochet in each stitch around, I'm going to go ahead and skip those for the sake of time and say we've moved on to round 11. So to begin round 11, remember at this point it will have curved down. Now we're going to be working on our little fins here and our tail. So let me pick up my hook here and we'll start with round 11. We're going to half double crochet in the next nine stitches. So that's starting in this first one right here. So once again, as always, we want to move that stitch marker on up right there and mark that stitch. There we are, so that's the first one. And then we've got a total of nine. So there's one, two, three, four, five, whoop, get that through there, six, seven, eight, and nine. There we go. So then we're ready to make our first fin. We make two double crochets in the next stitch. So we yarn over, go to the next stitch, and put in one, two double crochets in that same stitch. And then we put three treble crochets in the next stitch. For a treble crochet, we yarn over twice, insert our hook, yarn over and pull up our loop, and yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. So let's do that twice more. Yarn over twice, insert our hook, pull up our loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. Now I need to pull up a little bit more yarn from my ball here. I am still using the original ball I made the first one with, so you can get several of these zipper pouches out of the set of yarns that you buy for it. All right, so that we've got our two double crochets, our two treble crochets, we need one more here. So we yarn over twice, insert our hook. Make sure you don't wanna try and bring the yarn over this way, it's going to squish the previous stitches. Bring it to the side like this when you go to yarn over. And that will help your stitch look a lot nicer. There we go. Work those off in pairs just as we did before. And now we've got those three treble crochets nice and tall right there. After that, we put two, two double crochets in the next stitch. Sort of bring that back down around here. There's one and two, Oop, get in there. 
There we go. And if it's curling up, you can see this one's kind of wants to be kind of wonky on me. You can just do a little bit of, I like to call it hand blocking, especially with brunette blanket because of this chenille texture, the stitches want to kind of stick together. And I will just literally pull them apart a little bit like this and let them settle down into the shape I want them to be. So you can see that's nice and flat now and create sort of that fin shape for us. So after we've got those in there, then we're going to half double crochet in the next 22 stitches to get us back over to that side. So we just find the next stitch there. Make sure you don't lose one because of this fanning out. That one doesn't disappear in there. And then just half double crochet in the next 22 stitches. So as you can see, 22 got us all the way over here to the other side. So now we can put on our second fin. And of course, it's going to be identical to the first. So let's do one more of those together here. We put two double crochets in the next stitch. So there's one and two. There we go. And now three treble crochets. Remember the difference with the treble is we yarn over twice. Go to that next stitch. We still work them off in pairs, just like we do with a double. Just have to do it one more time. Yarn over twice, go in that stitch. Make sure again, you bring that yarn sort of around there so it stays down at the base and you don't catch any of your tall stitches in your yarn overs. There we are. One more, go back in that same stitch. Shouldn't have too much trouble getting your hook in there. And there we go. You can straighten those out a little bit if you feel like you need to. Pull up a little bit more of this beautiful dark teal. And then we need two more double crochets in the next stitch to finish off our second little fin here. One and two. And then we can straighten that out a little bit there as well. So from there, now with that second fin made, we can go ahead and half double crochet in the next nine stitches. So let's find that next one and go in there. There's one, two, three, because we do have more than nine stitches left here. There's four, five, six, whoop, get that in there again, six, seven, eight, and nine. And now you should have one, two, three, four stitches left. So to finish up this round, we're going to single crochet in those last four stitches. One, two, three. Yarn's getting a little tension on it again. There we go. And four. And then we are going to turn. From here on out, we're going to be working on that tail back and forth in rows. So let's take a minute and look at round 11 here. Let me put the hook down. And you can see now, again, this would be a lot taller on our normal finished piece, but you can see what this round looks like. We've got one fin there. Our second fin should be nicely opposite. And then we ended up back here on those last four stitches. Kind of looks a little bit like a stingray right now. So let me put my hook back in the loop here. And now we are ready for row 12. Now row 12 is pretty straightforward. We're going to chain one and turn if you haven't already, or you can turn and chain one, whichever order you prefer to do it in. And then we are going to single crochet in the first two stitches. So there's one, two, and then we work two single crochets in the next stitch. So one and then a second one in that same stitch. And then one more single crochet in the stitch after that. So we have a total of five single crochets there and we're going to leave the rest of those unworked and turn again. So next is row 13 and row 13 is where we make the tail. So this one's a little complicated. So feel free to pause, rewind, use the gear icon to slow it down as needed. We're going to begin by chaining five. So we go one, two, three, four, five. Then I'm going to work into the back humps of that chain, not under the top two loops. I prefer to work under the back hump. I think it's going to give a nicer look to our finished tail. You, of course, can do whatever you like. 
I'm now going to skip the chain closest to the hook and single crochet in the chain after that. There we go. Then I'm going to half double crochet in the next chain. There we go. Then I'm going to double crochet in the next chain. And then we should have one chain left right there. So I'm going to put two treble crochets into that chain. So yarn over twice, go right in there. You can see I haven't really turned at this point. I'm not worried about this just yet. We're just working into these chains. So there's our first treble. I'll put one more in that same chain. There we go. And now we've worked into all those chains and we're going to work into these stitches. So now if you kind of haven't, or if we've been working on these and it's been turning like mine have, go ahead and turn. So you'll want your stitch marker back on this side so you know you're heading the right direction here. And then going back to my instructions as well, so I can double check here, we double crochet in the next stitch of row 12. So that's gonna be that one right there. So you can see we worked up this way, we do a simple turn and then just double crochet right into that last stitch right there. And same thing, if this is getting all kind of wild and wonky, just take a moment or you can wait till you're done and sort of straighten it out. There we go. So we have a double crochet in that first stitch there. We're going to half double crochet in the next stitch back here in row 12. Then we single crochet in the next stitch. And then we start building back up to make our second half. So next is going to be a half double crochet. And then a double crochet. And now we need to make the second half of our little tail here. So what we do next, I need to come back to my instructions too here and double check here. We are going to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, then skip the chain closest to the hook just as before and single crochet in the chain after that. Half double crochet in the chain after that. Double crochet in the chain after that. And now in order to mirror what we have on the other one, we actually need to treble crochet two together over these last two chains. So I'm gonna pull up a little bit more yarn here in preparation. And now we're ready. So to do a treble tro crochet two together into these two chains, we're going to start by yarning over twice. We go into the first one of those chains, yarn over and pull up our loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, and stop with two loops left on the hook. Yarn over twice again, go to the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, there we go, yarn over and pull through two. And now you can see we've got our active loop and one loop from each of those stitches still on our hook. We yarn over and pull through all three to finish it off. So once we've got that treble crochet two together made, then it's time to break the yarn and actually sew this side of the tail on. So it's gonna look a little, a little wacky right now, right? Doesn't, definitely doesn't look finished, but do not panic. Go ahead, put it down bring up your scissors and cut yourself a nice long tail. I recommend a good six to eight inches. You just wanna be able to weave your ends in really nicely. You're also going to want to grab your favorite yarn needle. You wanna make sure you've got one that's big enough to fit the Bernat blanket because this is a so, uh, super bulky weight yarn. And then I'm just going to take my hook here and pull up on that end, like so. So my hook is out of the way. Now I can take that yarn end and put it on my yarn needle. Kind of have to squish it in there to get it in, but there it goes. And now I'm just going to use this end to sew down the bottom of this tail. So if I turn it this way, hopefully you can see, I'm gonna be coming right down here, right to this base. And if I sew it right down there, do you see how that creates the same shape here on the other side? So you don't have to do anything fancy. It's not a special technique. Just send your hook, or your, rather your needle, where you want your yarn to be. 
like so. And then I'll probably come back into that stitch again, grab it, get it nice and tight up here to the side. Just pull it where you want it. Give it a little zhuzh, make sure you like the way it's laying. There we go. And you can see that is our tail. From here, we can go ahead and weave this end in as well as our beginning end. And again, especially with that magic circle, just make sure you weave it in both directions. Alrighty, so in making our demo piece for the top, we've exactly made the belly piece. So the portion of our basket that is in white is exactly what we just made here. It's just like the top, but we've eliminated those rounds that give it the height, round six through 10. So just repeat those same exact rows to make the bottom of your basket. Alrighty, so the last piece we need to make for our blue whale is this little crown, which is of course, totally optional, non-functional, and just for fun but it is a cute piece that you could add to any amigurumi or stuffy that you make. So let's go ahead and make one together. Now, I'm gonna find the end of my yarn here and I'm going to come in about a foot or so. I'm not going to measure it, but I wanna leave some extra length at the beginning because it makes it easier to attach the crown to our stuffed animal or our pouch later because I can use one end to sort of anchor it on one side and then take the other end to sew it around. It just makes it a little bit easier for me, so it might make it easier for you too. So I'm gonna go ahead then and put my slip knot in here, about, like I say, 10 to 12 inches or so from that end. And then we're going to begin by chaining 10. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And we are going to be working in spirals again. So I'll go ahead and grab a couple of stitch markers here. I only need one, there we go. And then this is kind of unique. We're going to single crochet in each stitch or each chain, but we're gonna start with the first one. We're going to be coming into our circle. So I'm just going to go ahead and sort of gently and carefully bring that around so that I can put my hook under the loops of that first chain I made, just like that. Get my end sort of back out of the way there. There we go. So you can see I've got my active loop and my hook under the top two loops of that first chain I made. Then I can go ahead and put a single crochet right in there. There we go. And move that around, flip it around if you need to. I put the tail on the wrong side, doesn't really matter. There we go. So there is our single crochet in our first chain. And then we're just going to gently go around here and put a single crochet in each remaining chain. So since we chained 10, we should have a total of 10 single crochets when we get all the way around. We are not going to join with a slip stitch. So just find each chain and put a single crochet right in each one. So now I have a total of 10 single crochets, one in each chain, and I'm right back to where my tail end is. So. Now for round two, we're simply going to single crochet in each stitch around. So it's a little bit easier. That first round can be a little wobbly. If you feel like your chain got twisted, again, do not fret. It's all just going to get sewn right down to your whale or whatever you're sewing it to. So there's our first one. We're just gonna to continue to single crochet on around. Another 10 stitches. So after round two, there's just one round left for our crown. So for this round, we're going to work a double crochet and then a pico in the next stitch and then slip stitch in the stitch after that. And that's our repeat. So we'll begin in our marked stitch here with a double crochet. And I'm going to go ahead and take this stitch marker out of the way. We won't need it after this. So we make the double crochet and then we make a pico. And there are lots of different ways to make a pico, although most of them sort of follow the same form, of course. But the way we're going to do it for this pattern is we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then slip stitch in the top of the double crochet that we just made. So the way I like to do this is to go ahead and put my hook right underneath those top two loops of the double crochet. And then I'm going to wrap my yarn around the side here and then make that slip stitch. You can see that helps our Pico stand up nice and tall. So after that, we then slip stitch in the next stitch. So come back down here and slip stitch. And then we want to repeat that whole series again. So double crochet in the next stitch. 
then pico. So one, two, three. Insert our hook right in the top of that double crochet we just made. Bring the hook or the wrap, yarn rather around the side. Yarn over and pull our loop through. Then we can slip stitch. And then we slip stitch in the next stitch. So we continue that series of stitches double crochet, pico, slip stitch in the next, all the way around. Alrighty, so I just slip stitched in that last stitch and it's easy to see because of our, we've got our double crochet and pico right there. So after that, we can go ahead and cut our yarn, pull up our scissors, and I'm going to leave another long tail here. And grab my yarn needle again and pull that up. There we go. So then I'm going to do the same thing I did with the other piece where I just pull up on that end right there. And then I can put it onto my yarn needle like so, there we go. And then we can just weave in this end from here. Now, like I say, I actually like to use both ends, but I still want to connect it up here at the top. So I'm just gonna go sort of at the top of that previous double crochet there. Oops, went a little too far. There we go. And sort of sew it together. And then I'm going to send my needle down along the inside towards the bottom of our little crown there in sort of a little different spot. So this will give me a little bit of space between my two ends. And then this can be really handy, like I say, when it's time to sew them on. So let's go ahead and move on to assembling our blue whale. So our first step in assembly is adding the safety eyes. So you'll want to take your blue piece, of course, before you've sewn it to anything else, and add those safety eyes right to the front. So when you're doing that, you'll want to make sure that they are, of course, opposite the tail and centered nicely between your fins. I found that putting them, oh, let's see, it was around rows 12 to 13, right there, kind of in between rounds 12 and 13, you can see. And according to my notes, approximately nine stitches apart. So you can kind of see a little bit in front of each of those fins, but you can, of course, move those around, put them higher, lower, wider, more closely set, whatever look you prefer. Safety eyes are really easy to use and are safety rated for children three and above. So if you are giving this to someone under the age of three, I recommend that you embroider those eyes on instead. But to use one, you simply take the eye portion, if you will, with this shaft, place it right through the fabric where you want the eye to be. We'll give our a whale a temporary third eye here. Make sure it goes all the way here to the other side. And then you just take the backing and then push that right down on and it will snap on nice and permanently. I'll pull this one out here and you can see on our original how that isn't going anywhere. Now, if this is something you're going to be reaching into and out of a lot and you're worried about scraping your hands on the back of these, you can, if you go outdoors or it's in a well-ventilated area, take a household lighter and actually melt the end down here and use the metal portion to flatten that out a little bit. But again, that should be done by an adult outdoors very carefully. After you've got those safety eyes installed wherever you want them to be, then it is time to go and add the crown. Again, we want to add those eyes in the crown when it's still a separate piece. It makes it a whole lot easier. So if I set these to the side here and bring up our crown, I can demonstrate a little easier how we sew these pieces together. So as I said, our crown is optional and that means you could sew it on wherever you want it to be. Straight in the middle if you want or off to the side at sort of a jaunty angle like I did. So this is where having those two ends, I think, comes in really handy. I'll go ahead and just pick one, usually the shorter of the two, and go ahead and put that on my needle. And then I will use that sort of as an anchoring spot. So let's say I want to, let's say for this one, I want to be exactly centered. I'm just going to do my best to center it over my magic circle right there. Then what I'm going to do is, of course, take my little guy here and put him where I want him and then use the first one of those ends to put it sort of exactly where I want the side of my crown to be. And I might even tack that down. Not a lot. I still want to be able to take it out in case it's in the wrong spot. But I'm just going to get that in there a little bit, maybe even keep it a little bit loose. Don't pull it too tight there. Then I can take my other end right here and we'll get that on our yarn needle as well now. There we go. 
And now I can use this one to start sewing. And I can even use my fingers underneath to help hold this one in place if I need to. But it sort of gives it a little bit of an anchor. And if you feel like that's not enough, then you can also take your stitch markers and sort of hold that down where you want it to be. Otherwise, you can just start eyeballing it and sewing it right on. The way I like to do it is just grab a loop of the crown or whatever piece you're sewing on and then go right back down into the fabric you're sewing to, like so. Then come over another stitch, grab another loop, and sew it down wherever you want it to be. There's not really, you know, a specific technique you need to use. This is the way I like to do it. If I'm sewing it on to give to a child, um, I will probably go around it a few times to make sure it is sewn on extremely well. If I know it's a piece that's just going to sit on a shelf, I might not be quite as thorough. But you just want to grab a bit of the bottom of that crown and keep sewing all the way around. How it looks on here, not nearly as important because, of course, it's going to be on the inside. And strictly speaking, nobody should really be seeing it that much. Once you've got it all sewn in, then you can, of course, tighten this up and weave in both of these ends and even the, use this end as a bit of extra sewing length if needed. So after you've added the eyes and the crown, all that's left is to finish off sewing the belly to the body and installing that zipper. So what you want to do, first things first, is make sure you've got the right side facing out. So we work from this side of the belly and this side of the body. This will ensure that the tail matches up properly. You can use your stitch markers. And that's what I like to do. You should have the same number of stitches in both the top and the bottom and just match up stitch by stitch by stitch. Of course, I left the front a little open wider. Then I took my zipper, unzipped it, like you can see right here how it's currently unzipped. You can see at the end here, there's a stopper. So this end will always stay together. And this end, the beginning end, if you will, they come apart. So I was then able to use my stitch markers, and I think I still can here, to match up my zipper and lay it out to my piece. Now this is the part that does take the most amount of time. You just wanna sort of put it up against your piece and hold it in place. Then you can use those stitch markers, and this is the joy of this yarn zip. Look how easily this just goes right through. Like that, just like that, it just pushes right through. You can see those threads, and then of course you can you know, line it up if you wanna go through the stitch first, like so, and then it just goes right on through that section. You can totally pin it right in place all the way around totally into those stitches. So you can actually count your stitches and say, okay, I'm gonna start sewing it in, you know, at this stitch off of the fin, and then make sure it ends at an equidistant from the other fin. and. Unfortunately, at that point, you just have to take your time with it, but it really, really doesn't take that long. Like I said, because of this channel and being able to use the stitch markers, it just boom, 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 that quick. I have a picture of it all laid out with the stitch markers on the blog post for the pattern if you need to reference that. So after you've got that zipper pinned in, I'm going to recommend that you actually sew in the zipper before you sew around the fins. So the reason we do that is because the zipper is the fiddliest part, right? It's going to take the most concentration. It's the most likely one that we might accidentally make a mistake on because the rest of these are matched up stitch by stitch by stitch. So we just want to sew the zipper in first in case we need to pull our stitches out and redo them. And to sew it in, as you can see here, I used what's called the running stitch. So we just go up and down and up and down, just running right along. We're not back stitching. So that makes it easier also to take it back out if you have made a mistake. That said, it is in there. It is not budging. It is in there really, really nicely. So of course I used the blue yarn to sew in the top one and the white yarn to sew in the bottom one. Now I have a black one here, of course. Probably wouldn't wanna use a black zipper uh, for this project unless you had different colors for your whale. And you can see this is also the 22 inch version, but I just pulled it up here so you can see just how easy it is to sew on. So let me find my piece here. There we are. So here is our, our little demo piece. So you can go ahead and unzip it. And of course on the nine inch one, these are gonna stay attached. So we'll pretend they have to stay attached here too. And then 
you just hold it right to where you want it, like so, like I was showing you before. Then you can take your stitch marker, go right through the stitch, and go right through the zipper to hold it in place, like so. Just like that. And then you can do that all the way around. And you want to make sure that it's not pulling too tight or too loose. You just want to just take your time and just lay it gently right along the seam. And then, of course, the 9-inch one is just the right length as it is. You won't have to do any trimming or anything. It should fit really nicely right in between those two fins. Then for sewing, as I said, when you sew it onto the blue, you'll want to use the blue yarn. When you sew it onto white, you'll want to use white yarn. I'm going to use white here and our black zipper just to make it so it's really, really easy for you guys to see what I'm doing. We just go ahead and start weaving it in. And we can weave in our end at the beginning or at the end, rather. But we just go ahead and start sewing. So I'm just going to take my yarn needle. You can see it just goes right through that little channel right there. Super easy. And right through that stitch. And then I pull. And can you see that? Isn't that amazing? Just pulls right through. No struggling. I want to leave a good, you know, six to eight inches or here so I can weave that end in to my fabric when I'm all done. But after that, I can just keep sewing. Come over to the next stitch and go right on through that channel. It's going to keep all your stitches lined up, which is going to keep your zipper on there really beautifully evenly. Can you see? Normally when I'm sewing on a zipper, I'm worried about it kind of going up and down along the seam. This is going to stay so nice and straight. And with this great big yarn, I'm not even worried about back stitching or anything like that. I just go right on through and keep making that running stitch. And I don't even have to use my fingers or excuse me, I don't even have to use my eyes. I can use my fingers to feel right where that channel is. It makes it so easy. And we can just keep sewing our zipper on. Once we've got the zipper sewn in, then we take some of the blue yarn and sew together all the way around anywhere that the zipper itself hasn't covered. Weave in our ends and we're all done. And that's how to crochet the Blue Whale Zipper Pouch featuring brunette blanket and a nine inch yarn zip. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.